life bravely volunteered to, to do the filming today and Steve has you know, copped out by doing the jump. So, uh, so you ready? Here goes. Welcome to Gozo, where at last the sun is shining. <laughs> yes, it's been a real mix of weather again. Early season has been trouble here. I mean, it is an island, so you'd think you'd be able to hide from the wind, but it's been more difficult than we thought. Two islands, actually, mm. but we've still struggled to find bays. You've probably seen all of them. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I hope you like the film. Coming up, running from the wind on unexpected stormy seas. What wind strength do you need to break your snubber? and discovering Steve's personal history in the splendour of Valletta. There's something inspiring about the backdrop of Valletta Harbour Marina. It's our last day here and after the morning workout, it's back to boat work. As the bells ring out, we're taking our final measurements for our new sails. So when we did the Yankee before, we showed a bit of the measuring you do, taking the sail off and measuring that up. We've already done that with the, with the sail here. We've got the dimensions of that, but precision always, always want more measurements, measurements of the boat as well to, to get it to fit perfectly. So one of those is the measurement that the swivel gets to all the way at the top. Um, so I'm gonna tie the tape measure to it. I'll put a bit of rope up there with it as well, because I don't really want to just pull it down with the tape measure. It might tape measure might break I suppose or distort so let's have another line as well get that on there we'll hoist the sail up and get that measurement and there's a couple of measurements on deck and then we can get our order in okay so it's fully up the top so this one is B yes on the yeah, form B. B which is from the top swivel to the bottom swivel so you're just following what they've got in their diagrams and this one is 11 meters and, no, sorry, 12 meters, 24. So it would have been better to have a slightly less blustery day. All right, so lastly then, the luff tape size, I'll get the calipers on this. It's always a tricky one to do, I think. So it's coming up as the old one is 5.2, 5.3. But then to get the actual sizing here, so you just try and put a, a yeah. drill bit up and it'll take a 6.5 with a little bit of slack in fact it'll probably take a 7 mil if uh, if i could actually get it in this bottom slot but it, no, it won't yeah. it won't actually go through there to well, go in we just about managed to get the sail back up and furled before the wind picks up and we plan to head out to a nearby anchorage for the night the only problem is the wind just keeps blowing so this next stop is very short-lived so it does seem like we spend a lot of our time in Malta <laughs> running away from the heavy winds. Good job it's an island and there's uh, always places you can go. And the other thing you can end up doing a lot, look at this, cleaned that boat yesterday as we left the marina, I cleaned it and it's absolutely filthy. Look, this is the Scirocco wind that brings in all this dust. It's bloody horrible. Anyway, I think we're going to get a lot of salt water over us as we come out of here because it's uh, quite swelly out there, I think. I'll give us a wash. We're having a bit of a rough ride. We're going round to Marsa Schlock, which we think will be a bit better protected. There's a there's a force eight gale expected this afternoon we want to be out of the way of that it's a pity because i was looking forward to going to valletta today another day <laughs> gotta follow the wind
And this is the chart. Gale force winds coming from the northwest, so we tuck into the bay in the southeast and we're safe. But we do need to get to Valletta, so Steve's sister gives us a lift so Steve can get his photo taken to add to the documents he needs for his Maltese passport. The last bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, got a copy of my mother's birth certificate and marriage certificate. Um, it goes right back to these are the early ones from my mum here. I don't think she was properly registered because it was during the war, so they had to go to the church and get something to register from the church. Hey, well, my sister. <laughs> Angie received her passport a couple of years ago. So do you get to keep your UK passport as well? Well, that's the idea. We have both. Angie's got both. So, yeah. Just for as and when we need something that is in Europe, I can have that one. Has your uh, sister applied already? Yes, she's already Angela, done Angela, am I right? That's right. Issa. Um, same application of your sister. Yeah, oh, okay. As well as the formalities, we also had some things to see in Valletta. This is St John's Co Cathedral, rich in history, built by the Knights of St John in the late 1500s and filled with their tombstones, forming a floor, quite literally, to die for. Everyone gets one of these when they come in, which is really handy because it's very quiet in here. Everyone's listening. Italian Grand Master Mark Antonio Zondadori, who reigned for just two years, <laughs> from 1720 to 1722. This is stop four, the chapel of the Long of Germany. Everyone's been here. Art covers every inch, and the most famous artist to be associated with this place is Carvaggio. This is his masterpiece, The Beheading of St John the Baptist, the only painting he ever signed. Carvaggio himself, however, was publicly humiliated, defrocked and expelled from the order in front of it in 1608. For me though, more recent history is more relevant, as my whole family would have sat in these pews two generations ago as my grandparents were married here. In a nearby street, Angie wanted to visit a convent that had recently opened to the public. This too had a family relevance, as my mother was often looked after by the nuns. I have no idea where, but there are echoes of stories I used to hear from her with a chilling sign on the wall here. The control room, it says where girls were forcibly dragged, kicking and screaming, for correction. My mother referred to the nuns as the most evil people she had ever met. This building is beautiful, but it's not a good place. As we leave Marsa Schlock, we pass a tug towing another fish farm. I say another because we've counted several coming in over the last couple of days, and they just keep coming. If this carries on, soon there'll be no space for anchoring at all. Luckily, there are other places to go, so we move just round the corner to a bay near St Peter's Pool. dropped so we blow up the kayak and take an early morning paddle round before the tourists arrive. It 
It's also our first chance to try out the new waterproof drone. Such a relief to see it sit on the water and film underneath the surface. St Peter's Pool was made famous by Titty, the diving dog, the Jack Russell who'd do anything to retrieve a ball. That's a long way for a little dog. It is. <laughs> a long way for a person. Are you going to do it? No. Oh, come on. You can. Where are you going from? Over there? Here. I think here's the best place, isn't it? It's very clear. It's beautifully clear. It is. And still quite cold, I should add. Aretha Franklin, Dion Warwick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Whitney Houston. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure they were all here. <laughs> so it's a nice thought. Yeah, you sort of assume people have put their own <laughs> name, but it seems to be a thing that you have to put. Names of famous people. Shaggy. Martin Luther King over there. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Oh, God. Well, I've bravely volunteered to, to do the filming today and Steve has you know, copped out by doing the jump. So, uh, so you ready? Here goes. Yay! I think I may have been a bit close for the underwater shot there. Sorry about that. But here's some much prettier pictures of Fair Isle in the bay that evening. And the next morning. Great for a photo shoot. Sailing to the north of Malta, we pass the country's only waterfall, which comes from the desalination plant. There is no natural water source here. Given that, it is remarkably green and very popular with tourists over the summer. You can see all the seaweed down there. Well, later in the summer, that all gets cleared away. So this is a fantastic beach. Going out, you can see how shallow it is. Lovely. There's also plenty of places to hike and climb. And simply hang out. These boat houses were built illegally many years ago, but then allegedly a sharp witted politician suggested that if the residents voted for him, he would legalise them. And hey presto, they are now all legal. And some of them even have electricity. Good plan. But whoever goes down must go up again. The paths are endless and the vegetation quite amazing. In some places it's like walking through a giant rock garden. prickly pears and guess what these are? Capers. 
which we see people picking early in the mornings. Another national treasure is this. The Victoria Lines built by the British in the late 19th century. The lines were built in sections to connect various fortifications to secure the south from the north of the island in the event of invasion. The British fleet was well protected in Valletta and bays in the east and no one in their right mind would attack the sheer rock faces along the south but the north was considered vulnerable. In the event, Malta never came under direct attack but the lines remain. Clouds, they are a gathering. Just clouds, fine. Just no clouds. No armies, there's a lookout there. Safe for now. It's good though, isn't it? I mean, proper big thick wall. Yeah. There are also caves along the wall, which were lived in as recently as the 1960s. Well, have they bricked it up then? The ceiling's mm. blackened, so. Oh, yeah. I think people have stayed here for a while. Yeah, reminds me of Cappadocia. It does, yeah, one of those little ones there. Hello. Oh, where are you? Are you around the corner? Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> freaky. Yeah, that is a bit freaky. Tunnels. So it's a semi-detached, this one, was it? <laughs> and now we're up at the top. It is very windy, so I think we're going to go back down now and sail off again tomorrow. And in the evening, the wind only gets worse. Time to batten down the hatches. We have 50 knot blasts overnight, and at one point, our new 20 millimeter snubber is snapped in half. As we inspect the boat for further damage the next morning, we also find the solar panel on the doghouse has been ripped off completely. That would have taken quite a force. Although the wind has now dropped, it is due to change direction and blow straight into the anchorage. So with the wind in one direction and the swell coming from the other, yes, you guessed it, we're on the move again. The only question is where to move to. In the end, the safest place turns out to be here in Comino, the small island in between Malta and Gozo. Well, it's been a strange day of sailing. We've uh, looked at about four or five different anchorages trying to find somewhere out of the swell because the wind has changed direction 180 degrees. The swell that had built up from that storm is, is still there. So we're in the most sheltered place we could find, which is actually the Blue Lagoon. If you'd seen the last episode, this whole area behind me here was full of boats and tourists when we uh, we came here during the day uh, on a nice still day but no one's out at the moment just because it's so rough but but it is at least reasonably sheltered in here we've uh, we've got ourselves as deep in as we can just before the swimming boys but we're still rolling around a little bit so it's going to be a bit of a a rolly night but hopefully by the morning it'll all calm down and be flat calm and we can have a little uh, swim or kayak around here without any of the tourists which will be very nice that's what i'm hoping for anyway we'll see good morning well the bad news is it actually rained first thing this morning so we didn't get up and uh, explore before the tourists arrived they have started to come in now um, but it's also the good news because look the stainless steel it's actually quite a lot cleaner. It was clean rain for the first time. So hopefully I can uh, get on with actually doing a proper job of cleaning and not have it filthy the next time it rains again. So I think we are gonna have to move though, looking in here. I mean, it's, we're rolling around. The, uh, the wind is gonna come up again. I mean, what's going on with this place? It's gonna come up strongly this time from the north. So we do need to move from here because that will uh, bring it into here. But you can see with the swell, it's going to knock down that swell. It's going to change around or sort of die off and it'll come maybe a little bit back with it coming into this way. But it's only going to get worse in here, I think. So we're going to go off to the 
south shore of Gozo and see if we can tuck ourselves away in there a little bit. Umjar Bay looks like a good option, a long deep channel offering protection from three sides. What could possibly go wrong? Well, this is a beautiful little anchorage. We are stern tying. Steve's um, there at the stern. You can see all around here, just down there is the end of it, but it's very narrow. I'm just going to get the bow around. Stern tying always makes me a little bit nervous, but Steve's on his way now and uh, hopefully it'll come out okay. Yep, we're going to, there's a post up there, I don't know if you can see it from here. We're aiming to get it there. And it has been so swelly, but it, we're better off in here. It is not quite flat calm, but closer to normal. <laughs> As you can see, Steve traipsing across the rocks. Okay, it's all good. Is I, it? Forgot, I forgot the number one rule though. What's that? Wear shoes. Oh no, is it a bit, <laughs> a bit spiky? It's spiky rocks, yeah, it's like, it's like being back in Turkey. They're really spiky rocks. I should have learned my lesson from Turkey. Always wear shoes. Are we going to put another one on as well? Yeah, let's just tighten this one up for now to get some position and then uh, think about where the other one should go. Okay, great. I think this should hold us. Eve! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving slightly, is it? Yeah, we can stick it on the winch if we need to, but I think... How, how close do you want it? Bring it back. About half this distance, probably. Really? That's where we got to before with the chain sort of okay. fairly tight, so... Oh, the sun's coming out. Keep going, yeah. Things are looking up. It's quite good. Positioned like this, we've got any swell that is coming in to come straight in on the nose. So that's always a good thing about stern tying is you can pick your orientation and aim yourself into the swell, which is much nicer. You need to get a little bit more space here though, because you've got these pleasure boats that are coming in and out. And they <laughs> I know, I didn't count for that. So these come past us, no. They were smiling broadly. So all good for about an hour. But as the wind picks up from the northwest, we're being blown onto the eastern side of the bay, which is where we have our stern line. So we decide to move again to the protection of Mjar Harbour. At least here, it will be quiet and safe, we think. <laughs> and just as we start to anchor, look what's coming by. Wow. Sorry, right. I think they only run once every five minutes. I think we'll be fine. Well, every cloud has a silver lining and it turns out we can pick up diesel here. So the next morning we go in. There's just one small problem. Why have you got an umbrella up? <laughs> because it's raining again. Don't want it in the diesel, in the green diesel. Green diesel. Yeah, it's cool. Beautiful. Like mint green. And then our luck changes. The rain stops, the wind turns, and we find the perfect breeze to the perfect bay. A reminder that this is why we go sailing. Yes, this really is a beautiful bay. We've been here a couple of days, so we'll be looking around in the next episode. And you might notice in the background behind us, a boat that you should recognise, actually. That's <laughs> Sailing Project Atticus. They're here with us, so we've been enjoying some, some time messing around with, with those guys. It'll be in the next episode, that. Absolutely. But in this episode, your passport is a bit of a highlight. Yeah. 
few weeks, they reckoned, and you'll be Maltese. Yeah, very quick. <laughs> I mean, 10 minutes to do, and they said, yeah, a few weeks, month at the, at the most. You, they'll either send it to the uh, London Embassy or it can, you can pick it up here. My sister can pick it up for me. So, yeah, dead easy. Should have done that a while ago. That's great. But it doesn't work for both of us. It's just, it's, just, it's just for me. But, you know, it's a good thing, and the kids can get it as well now if they need it. So Yeah, it's and good. that church. Oh, oh, where, yeah. your, where your grandparents grandparents got married, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's amazing. amazing. I mean, it's been in the last couple of centuries it's looked like that. In the times of the nights, apparently, it's very austere in there, and it's got more and more mm. just... I mean, it is just dripping with stuff now. It's absolutely incredible And in apparently there. the tapestries that were around as well, I was very impressed with those, but mm. they're just there temporarily. Yeah. They're not there all the They've time. They've been sort of different yeah. bits, as if they need more art in there. <laughs> <laughs> more stuff in. But, yeah, the floor, I just thought, was incredible. The colours that are still there in those tombstones. Yeah. Just amazing. Amazing, just amazing. But we're looking forward now to exploring a bit of Gozo and then getting on. Next stop, Sicily. Next stop, Sicily. Um, the south of Sicily. We came across the north a couple of years ago on mm. our way through quickly. Yeah. So we'll look at the south and, um, the, AO, and the west. And the islands at the top there. But yeah. there's an island off, off it just to the west, so we'll, we'll have a look there. We will. Yeah. And, and onwards through the med on the way back out. So. And I hope we get some a bit better weather, to be fair. We're waiting here for a couple of days because we do need a weather window to get across and I think we've had our, yeah. our share of that. And it'll be warm enough for you, for you to swim, yeah. darling, soon. Yeah, I'll swim in Sicily. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> I will. And then, up to, and then up to Sardinia, so we're looking forward to that. And hopefully nothing else will break because yeah. that's, that's the other thing. You do feel, I don't know, I always feel quite safe in this boat. But it's yeah, no boat is solid when the wind's like that. There's not much you can do. Yeah, well, at least, you know, we've got good ground tackle. We don't have to worry about dragging and things like mm. that. But, you know, things can just get ripped off it. The, uh, the wind was so, so heavy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that's all to look forward to. So thank you very much to our patrons. And the patrons are really helping us out um, at the moment. We've had a lot of expenses. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, and things dropping in the water. But hopefully the drone will no longer sink. So that's been, <laughs> that's been a tick. We can drop that in the water as much as we like and it's still okay. <laughs> so that's great. So that's a tick. So thank you to our patrons. Thank you to our subscribers. And thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.